So again, the first thing you do is draw your set of axes. Of a sphere within a sphere. So first let's draw the outer sphere, the big one. Chop away a section of it so you can look inside. Shade the skin of my sphere. outer sphere. The outer sphere has a radius of 2.3 angstroms and it's got a likelihood of 19% of finding the electron there. sphere inside here. So now we have to draw the smaller sphere. Cut it open so it can look inside. has a radius and that radius is 0.55 angstroms and the probability is 5%. Sarah, can I find the electron outside the big sphere? Yeah. It's just the probability is less than 19%. So we lightly shade the outside of the sphere. Can I find my electron inside the big sphere? Yes. So we lightly shade that. Can I find the electron inside the small sphere? Yes. So we lightly shade that. <coughs> Remember, the darker the shading, the greater the probability of finding it. So when n equals 2, and we're dealing with the second fundamental wave pattern, now there are two likely places to look for it. If you're looking for me, where are the two most likely places to look for me? My classroom and where else? In the lab. Now I'm in my classroom more than I am in the lab. But there are two places of high probability to look for me. So same thing here. The two places of high probability, 2.3 angstroms away and 0.55 angstroms away. Those are the two areas of high probability. Could the electron be somewhere else? Sure. Just like me. I don't have to be in the classroom in the lab. I could be in the closet down in the music room. I'm not in there. Very low probability. But I could be. A very low probability you will find me in the closet of the music room. So, <clears throat> where is there zero percent chance of finding the electron? Where is there zero percent chance, Lauren? Where? In the center, at the nucleus. Where else? 
else is there zero percent probability of finding the electron? At infinity. But there's one more place of zero percent probability. It's between the two spheres. If we look at our graph, it touches zero percent probability between the two spheres. So now what I have to do is I take my eraser and I remove that or erase that, and that is zero percent, sorry, zero percent chance of finding the electron there. And remember the name of that is a node. A node is where there is zero percent chance of finding the electron. So we have two spheres and three nodes when n equals 2. And again, this is a probability graph. This doesn't tell us where the electron is. It tells us where we might find the electron. And then one last thing here, Trevor, to really kind of again mess with your minds. Okay? Can the electron be there? Can it be there? Yeah. Can the electron be there? Yeah. Can the electron be there? Yeah. Let me back it up again. Make it a little bit more. Can it be there? Yeah. 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 Can it be there? No. Okay. So how does the electron go from here to there without going through there? Because if it goes through there, then there should be a small chance that I could find it there. Right? It's like saying I could be in the A wing, and I could be in the F wing, but I couldn't be in the C wing. Well, you can't go from the A wing to the F wing without going through the C wing. It's impossible. So how can the electron go from here to here without going through there? Well, they have to explain that, and their idea was that electrons can tunnel through space, meaning that they can disappear and reappear somewhere else. Now, Jared can't do that, but it'd be a neat trick if he could. If he could just disappear and reappear in his next class. Where's your next class, Jared? There you go. You could tunnel through space and just appear in the G-Wing. That'd be pretty cool. Probably freak your teacher out. Yep? So since you said there was three nodes on the little, is there three nodes? The yep, there's 0%, there's my first node. Oh, and then infinity. Then that one, and then infinity, so the three nodes.